Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're doing a video that we have done... We have not done. We've never done this video. We always do best beginner reptiles, uh, cheapest beginner reptiles, whatever. But this time we are actually going to look at the five best intermediate reptiles. So if you have been keeping reptiles for a little bit and you want to move up to something a little bit more challenging, these pets might be for you. Obviously these aren't necessarily the absolute best five. These are just five super cool options that you have. There are so many options out there there and the best is going to depend on you as a person and what you're into and what you like. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by the Doobie Dude, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at thedoobiedude.com. Let's get started. All right, so the number one on this list is the Bearded Dragon. The Bearded Dragon appears in my honorable mentions for every single best beginner lizard. And every single time I say that it's not really for beginners, it always just appears on that list because it is often seen as the best beginner pet. But I just don't think that it necessarily is the best first time pet reptile because there are a lot of hidden costs associated with it. Maybe not as much now. Well, maybe. I don't know. So bearded dragons, super cool, amazing personalities. They are just like super chill and they just like will hang out with you, especially as adults. As babies, they're really fun to watch. They're very active, especially when they're like hunting food and stuff. They're super readily available. You can get them anywhere and everywhere and you can find different morphs. You can always find them being rehomed on places like Craigslist, stuff like that if you're looking for an adult. The reason that they are not necessarily beginner reptiles Tiles and more towards the intermediate is because of a couple of different things. Number one, they need a very large space. Bearded dragons need at least a four foot by two foot tank. They also need a UVB light that spans at least two thirds up to the entirety of the top of that tank. Linear UVB, those light fixtures are very expensive and they need to be replaced every six to 12 months. In addition to that, they need a pretty high basking spot at like 110 ish depending on the age and all that jazz and those heat bulbs are not very cheap because they tend to go out a lot so you're replacing those a lot babies eat a lot and so you have to buy a whole lot of food for them babies and adults both are going to eat salads every single day and they are also going to eat bugs you have supplements that you have to give them to make sure that their tanks are being super super clean so that they don't get parasites it's better to not feed them readily available foods like crickets and feed them things like dubia roaches just because of parasite risk they could potentially become egg bound if you get a female and she doesn't lay her eggs and then that's surgeries for this animal. There's a lot that goes into bearded dragons. Next up, pretty related to the bearded dragon, kind of, in terms of care and stuff, we have the Euromastics. Euromastics do not find their way on my beginner list because of a few different things, kind of similar to bearded dragons. We have the fact that they also require a high level of UVB. They are a desert daytime creature. They require an even hotter hotspot than bearded dragons do. The surface where they live lay to bass needs to be 120 to 130 degrees. That's very hot, but you want to be able to provide that without the ambient warm side temperature being too hot. You also want the humidity to stay pretty low at like 20 to 30%. Their temperature requirements and UVB requirements are pretty high up there. In addition to that, depending on the type, because some neuromastics get very, very big, depending on the type, they need anywhere from a four foot by two foot tank all the way up to some of them need six foot tanks that's a very big tank for this animal the nice thing about Euromastics though is that they only eat plants they don't eat bugs so you don't have to deal with the bugs so that's always cool they also are not as readily tame downable but it is very possible to get your Euromastics used to handling Huge thing with your mastics though is their availability is not very high. You don't see these like you would a bearded dragon, leopard gecko, crested gecko, where you see them all the time. Your mastics are a bit harder to come by, and when you do come by them, you need, 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 need to make sure that that your mastics is captive bred and not wild caught because wild caught your mastics are sold. You want to start out with the healthiest animal possible. If you want to tame that animal down, it also is going to be very helpful if that is a captive bred animal. If you don't start with the healthiest animal, vet bills. Next up, we have the chameleon. 
we're talking pretty much any kind of chameleon here. I know that on my cheapest beginner reptiles, I mentioned chameleon and I mentioned that they're not really beginner pets, but I listed them because they are sold as beginner pets all the time. Chameleons are not beginner pets. Chameleons are very difficult to properly care for and they are very finicky. If their care is not where it needs to be, they won't make it. They are not a super hardy species like a bearded dragon or leopard gecko is. Depending on the type of chameleon, whether we're talking about a panther chameleon or a smaller species, they need very large tanks. So it needs to be anywhere from about three foot tall to some need four or five, six foot tall tanks. Those tanks need to have cross ventilation, but you also have to keep the humidity up. Not not super super high it's not going to be like 80 percent humidity all the time usually this is done by installing a misting system so this is the first one on our list that needs a misting system that way that they can have drinking water because they only drink from like leaves and stuff like that they also do best with real plants you have to make sure that you are feeding them appropriately not only the appropriately sized bugs but the appropriate amount of bugs and they need to be supplemented chameleons also require very bright lighting. They need a hot spot that they're not going to like bake themselves in, but they have to be able to climb up to it. They need UVB lighting. Chameleons are very difficult to find healthy ones. So with chameleons, make sure that you are getting them from a good breeder. But as long as you do all of those things and you do get them from a trusted breeder, chameleons make really cool pets. They are awesome to watch eat. They are so awesome to just watch move. They're color changing, super cool. Chameleons are such, such, such cool animals. I just would highly suggest that you have experience in reptiles before you go into getting a chameleon. And again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to get them from a trusted breeder with good reviews. I'm personally guilty of reading the reviews and ignoring the negative ones and just paying attention to the positive ones because I tend to look on the bright side of things. Don't do that. Make sure that they are a good trusted breeder with overwhelmingly positive reviews. Next up, we have the blood python. I feel like I have not mentioned blood pythons on this channel in a very, very long time. Blood pythons are really cool. They are one that you don't see too, too often, but they're not terribly hard to find. I've seen them at multiple reptile shows. They're really cool. There's a wide array of different morphs of them because they have been captive bred for quite a while. Blood pythons don't require that much in depth of a setup. They do require about a four foot tank. They do require substrate, but their required temperatures are definitely not super high. The big thing, the big reason that they do kind of land on intermediate list, in my opinion, is for a couple of different reasons. Number one, from what I have seen, from what I have read, blood pythons don't do the best in glass tanks. They prefer something that is more insulated, like uh, PVC enclosures, wooden enclosures, acrylic enclosures. They also don't have the best reputation for having great attitudes. <laughs> they have a pretty good reputation of being kind of snippy, a little bit bitey, and that's why they don't necessarily go onto a beginner list for me, especially when you have things like porn snakes or ball python snakes that aren't going to go out of the way to bite you. Blood pythons are a pretty good option, especially if you have had it with snakes before. And if you are okay to tame that snake down, then go for it. Blood pythons are really cool. And they are one that I feel like I saw a lot about them for a long time. And then I just haven't seen or heard anything about them for a little while now. It's probably just me. Super cool option. And the last one on this list is the Chinese water dragon. Chinese water dragons have the best personalities. They are just such cool lizards. They're so beautiful. They are so cool to watch, but Chinese water dragons require elaborate setups and finding captive bred Chinese water dragons. It's, it's not easy. That is not an easy task. A lot of times, most of the time, when you see them in chain pet stores, they are wild caught. Make sure that if you are going to get one of these, 
you have verified that that person that you are getting it from has captively bred that animal. Make sure it's a trusted breeder. Like all the things on this list, make sure you're getting them from a good trusted breeder. Otherwise, they just don't tend to do very well in captivity. The setups for these guys is a lot. They require deep water. They are water dragons. They want to be able to swim around. They also require climbing room. They love to climb. What I see most of of the time is actually it's always homemade tanks for these guys so as you can imagine with all of that they need a very large cage their cage as recommended by reptifiles.com needs to be six foot long by six foot high by three foot deep and they're daylight animals that means hot spot for basking and UVB lighting. Just know that setting up for a Chinese water dragon is going to take quite a bit of effort on your part because you're probably going to have to build that enclosure. That and the whole captive bred wild caught thing is the reason that they end up on intermediate list for me. Otherwise, they're super personable, pretty easy to take care of once you have everything set up and good to go and where it needs to be in terms of temperatures and humidity and just that water climbing separation. Once you have all that good to go, then they're pretty easy. Also, if you have water on the bottom, you feeding them obviously is a bit more difficult. So you have to try to figure out how you're gonna feed them bugs when they'll drown, the bugs will drown if they fall to the ground. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Otherwise, super cool pet. But that is it. That is all that I have for this week's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was informative, especially if you are looking to get a reptile that's a little more difficult than just the more popular reptiles. Hopefully you enjoyed this. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. The Dubia Dude is such an awesome place to get Dubia Roaches for your pets. Dubia roaches are super nutritious. They are coming from a place that is gut loading those dubia roaches with organic food. So you know that they're super healthy. And the dubia dude focuses on reducing, reusing, and recycling. So they are shipping in things like recycled plastic water bottles. Absolutely love this company. This is the place where I get dubia roaches. They also sell things like the food for those dubia roaches as well if you need that so you can kind of just do an all-in-one dubia roach shopping spree. Absolutely love dubia roaches as a feeder. Make sure if you do order from the dubiadoo.com you use the code L and you can save 10% off of that entire order. Thank you so much to the dubia dude for continuing to partner with us here at L's Reptiles. As always, if you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout is here. This week's Instagram shout is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing, and sharing, and commenting, and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. All right. What is this? Ooh, another short video. I'm gonna zoom in like a little. A little. Let's already zoom in a little. Oh, that's better. We have the fact that they do not eat. We have the fact that, um, okay, quick, quick thumbnails before the camera dies.